morning. <clears throat> I'm indoors today because it's a bit cooler outside, although it's quite pleasant. Um, <clears throat> hope you had a lovely morning so far. We're going to get started. We're going to do um, start on all fours. I've put a block here for my back knee because we'll do some um, lunges, some crescent lunges. And for me on these wood floors, it's quite hard. So if you have that same problem with your knee, you can grab any kind of, maybe not such a nice decorative pillow, <laughs> but maybe one that the dog chews on or the kids don't care about for your back knee, just any, any support or a little folded up yoga blanket if you have one of those, that's a bonus. Okay, so we'll start in a tabletop position. So this is all fours. And if you look down, you see your hands, you're gonna open up the fingers, spread them out nice and widely, and have your knees right underneath your hips with the tops of your feet resting down toenail side. Now, <clears throat> if you were joining yesterday, you um, heard me speaking about grounding and we're gonna revisit that concept of grounding and connecting into the earth. And at any point in a yoga practice, the part of your body that's um, on the ground, so for instance here, it's my hands, knees, and the tops of the feet. Those elements that are down and, and connecting into the ground are the, the elements that you push in to the floor. So you, you connect into those areas, you push, and you, you sink and sort of become part of that. So as you um, exhale, you sort of melt, the visual of melting, you melt into the floor and your joints somewhat soften. And then as you breathe in, you push into the ground, you use that to elevate and lengthen. And as you exhale, you just feel yourself with that slow sinking and you'll feel like the quality of melting into the earth. So this is what is called a cat cow, but a really subtle one. So what I'm looking for you guys to do is to notice with less movement externally, less visual movement, feel the subtle movements of your body moving with the breath. So as you exhale, you let your belly sag and you lift the back of your head up and look forward on the out breath. And in breath. Morning. And then you can change that shape a little bit by rocking forwards and back. Just feeling connected with your breath. So as we come forward and back, when you're coming forward, you'll breathe in and you'll feel as you push back, you come back into your heels with your hips into heels, feel connected in your hands still. And then feel like your hands want to slide towards your knees. They don't, but it's that quality as you breathe in, your hands slide towards your knees. So the hands grip the floor, the skin grips. And then the hands do the opposite as you exhale, you push back. And we'll take our neck into play here. So we'll look at our belly on the out breath. And then we'll look forward and breathe in and come forwards. Okay, this is starting out nice and subtle. Just a nice, even, steady, grounding flow. And see if you can hear your breathing. Inhaling evenly. Hearing the exhale passing through your nostrils. Let's pass through three more of these movements. Go 
it feel connected in the tops of your feet, the knees and the hands. And on your last third and final out breath, you'll come to sit back in your heels. We're gonna drop our elbows and then you're gonna push your elbows into the floor. Okay, your hands are in um, what's called Sphinx pose. So their elbows are in line with the hands. They're in line with the edges of the mat. They can be a bit wider than shoulder width apart if it's too much strain on your shoulders. And lift the back of your head so you're looking between your forearms. Good. Push the elbows. Now stay here, but just give a gentle push into your knees. Notice if anything changes in the back body, in the belly. Good, breathe. And for this last breath, bring your hands so they're like karate chop hands. You're on the outside edge of your pinky finger and push into the outside edge of the pinky finger, all the way down the arm to the elbow and the knees and a light press in the tops of your feet. These are all the areas you're grounding. Good, and then bring yourself forwards. We're gonna stretch our legs out. So take a little planky down dog, Let's march the knees. Maybe lift a leg up and flick it out. Good, and then do the other leg. Good, and then walk the legs out. We're gonna march in place. Good, feel the hips swinging left to right. And as you do that, you're gonna take little baby steps towards your hands until you work yourself eventually, slow motion into a forward fold. And take it really slowly. Good, and once you're there, bend your knees. Now your hands can be dragging on the floor. You can grab your opposite elbows and hang. Bent knee. Good, and connect your feet into the floor. So you give a little push. Feel that quality of melting and easing into the ground. So giving into the ground, letting it receive you. Arms are gonna hang. Good, let the breath completely out in this position. Exhale, exhale, hollow out the belly and stay in that complete exhalation space. Hold that space for three, two, one. And then as you breathe in, you come up, lift up. Good, lift up, reach up, stretch up. And then you're here and standing. Okay, so let's greet the sun. Feet hip width apart. You're at the top of your mat. You're gonna breathe in and reach up. Look between the space of your hands. Now feel your feet here as well. Soften the knees. And then you're gonna fold in half. So right back where we just were. Fold in. Pause. Okay, feel your feet ground, ground, ground. And then start to lift your head, look forward, sit back in your little chair. Okay, we're gonna step one leg back and feel the grounding of that back foot. So as you step back, bend that back knee. <clears throat> okay, bend and straighten. So 
good. And then lift the heel up high on that back foot. And you can always have a look under your body. Check yourself out. See what's happening. Okay, so we're bending both knees. And then we're going to work to a straighten knee. But don't force it. If, it's, if the front one won't straighten, don't worry about it. So bend and straighten. Do that a couple times. Okay, and then hold that. Get a nice stretch here. You can bring your fingertips forwards. Straighten the elbows. And then make that back knee nice and bendy. This is a nice place to think about. Animals in the wild, they use their whole bodies to move. So this is us gonna, we're gonna step forward, okay, carefully using that back springy leg, step, Good, and then change sides, step the opposite leg back. And we'll do the same thing on the other foot. At first, you've got your back heel lifted. You're melting into that back foot, so ease into it. Okay, notice where your shoulders are. If they're up at the side of the neck, bring space into the shoulders. Okay, so you're working with that back foot grounding. And then you can straighten, uh, sorry, bend both knees and then straighten. Do that a few times too. Good, and then for a brief moment, we're gonna hold. Back leg can straighten, the heel can be high, and the front knee might have a soft bend in it, like mine. Walk your fingertips forward if that's possible. Good, have a look at your big toe. So that might require you lifting your gaze up. Okay, and then bring that back knee to a bend. Know that your whole body is gonna work to get that back foot up. It takes the whole body, spring up. Good, and then we'll bring that opposite leg, the one we started with, back. Okay, this is where you may need a little bit of a support for your back knee if you have it. Good, coming up into a runner's lunge. Bring your hands to your hips and the elbows back. Open up your chest. Okay, and then feel the weight come into that front foot and then push into the ground. Okay, so you feel that and push. Okay, and we're gonna bring our hands down in fists. I quite like this sort of punching into the floor, bend, Melt into that front foot, and then inhale, push into the front foot, and lift the arms up, release the fingers out. And then soften the elbows. They can come into fists, the hands again, and then push and rise and reach, look up. So we breathe out, and then we breathe in. It's all the movement happens from that front foot and we're stabilizing the position from the back foot. So in these next few, if the back knee feels ready to come off that floor, wherever it is, it can lift up. And then we ease down. Feel the feet. Let's do one more. Good, rise, hold. Good, and then gently lower. Now, if you're using a pillow, it's a good time to just switch it over to the other side. Okay, so feel yourself, take your time, stepping up, use your whole body. And that's why, um, you know, that's why animals look so graceful because they're aware of the movement. Um, well, they're probably not aware. They just do it. They use their whole body to create those movements. Those primal movements of jumping, leaping. Good. Come up to your runner's lunge. Hands are to the hips. Now feel your feet. Give a little push. Bring your chest so it's open. Shoulders come back. 
Okay, bring your hands to your side body. And then we're gonna punch up and release those fingers. That's a breath in, look up. And then ease into the foot. And rise. There it is. If the back knee can have a go, if it's ready, to lift up. We're gonna hold this last one. Rise from the feet, look up. And then lower yourself down. Spend a moment moving props if they're there to the side. And then when you're ready, you're gonna step back. Take plank pose, march the legs out. Look back at your feet, make them so they're under their hip width apart, excuse me, knees down. Push back, so toes are tucked under. We're gonna prepare for our down dog. Spread the fingers out wide, squeeze the elbows in towards your head. And when you're ready, inhale, knees rise away from the mat. Rise up and hold down dog. Okay, start to soften your left knee. Keep the foot on the floor and just bend the knee. You're indicating that that's the leg that's gonna step forward, look forward. Bring that foot in the space where your hands are. There's a center point there. That's where your foot wants to end up. Okay, so you do your best. And then bring the back heel down. Okay, come on up. Bring your hands to your hips. We're gonna start going into a warrior two. Here's me going over. I'm looking at my clock now. Okay, we don't have much time. So sorry if you had to step away at that point. But you'd skip warrior two. So we're gonna bend the front knee but from the foot, push and rise. So you can think if you bring this energy into just the knee, you can add a sound effect. Er, 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 er. But if you bring it into the foot and then you feel that quality of pushing, that's where the pose starts. The grounding, melt down. Now don't move your knee as it's bent, but feel the push without the knee moving, the foot pushing into the earth. Okay, and you can play with that. You can push the ball of the foot and lift the heel. You can lift the toes and press the heel and give that push. The knee staying bent. The back leg is your anchor. Firm your thigh. Okay. <clears throat> Pubic bone. There's a lot that goes on in this warrior too with the legs. Pubic bone lifts up, up and in. In is a little bit more of a interesting visual. So if you just visualize up, sometimes the end just happens. So keep your legs there. And then what happens is the arms come out. So this is my left hand and my left front leg. And then I'm reaching. Good. And then bring the quality in your feet again. Push and then ground through the push, receive, Look right over that left hand. Good, one more breath here. Vira Bhadrasana too. Now come with that front leg straightened with the push of the foot, straighten. Bring your hands to your hips. Okay, depending on how your mat's set up, if you need to come back into down dog and um, bring that right foot forward, take a moment. Because I'm facing the camera, all I have to do is turn my feet. So if you're that, I've got my setup. Now your right foot is forward. Okay, spend a moment waiting for others to set up. If you're here, 
feel the adjustment. Okay, little change. Now we're on the other side. So right knee, before you do anything, feel this left leg as an anchor. Okay, and you can even feel that back foot. Ground the knuckle of the big toe and lift the outside edge of the small baby toe. Lift that edge off the floor. And then you do the opposite. You bring it down, lift the big toe. Feel your ankle, okay? So you engage the whole foot, both edges, and firm, okay? Then from the grounding in that front foot, bend the knee and, and feel yourself ease into the ground. This is like the tree's roots, rooting, rooting, rooting. The tree growing, 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 right? <clears throat> Personally, I think all these poses should have plant and tree names as opposed to animals and men's names. <laughs> okay, so feel that. The knee's bending over the heel on that right foot. And then you add that quality of where the knee's not bending, but you're feeling the skin of the bottom of the foot. Grounding, pushing, receiving. Okay, all those qualities. So nice. And then the arms come out. That's a nice breath in. Sweep them out. Reach and lengthen. Look over the right hand. What you can do here, always a good thing to play around, is rotate your palms to face up and feel the adjustment in your shoulders. Feel the difference. Rotate the palms to come down and the thumbs down, like a, like a thumbs down. Shoulders roll forwards. Rotate your palms to face up. Exaggerate that, that thumb coming all the way around. Good, and hold. Look over that hand. Notice your breathing. Good, connect down, connect into your feet. Good. And then we come out on an in-breath. Push the front foot. Lift up. Good, reach up. Can you turn those toes in so both toes are the same? Bring your arms out wide. Just wiggle your feet in a little closer. Bring your hands to your hips, and we'll take a forward fold. Forward fold, wide-legged. Now, adding the shoulders, interlace the hands back behind you, and drop your hands up and over your head. Good. And feel your feet here. If your ankles hurt on the outer edges, your stance is too wide. Give your thighs a squeeze. Go a little deeper as you breathe out. Give your head a no shake. And then a yes. And then a figure of eight. And then stay here, but change your hands so they're down on the floor. And then push into your hands until your arms are straight. Okay, they're gonna help you lift up halfway. Firm your belly. Give the push into your feet and then coming from that to standing. There it is. Ah, good. Let's reach up. Good, and finish there. Soften your knees, walk your feet in. I went off piste, I wrote a script for <laughs> chair pose and we've gone over. So <clears throat> for a brief moment, I do wanna put a chair pose in there for the fronts of the legs. So bring, bye. Press your hands together. So bow in, legs are together, feet are together. If they're not, just step them together. Give the knees a squeeze. Squeeze your buttocks firm into your midline, so where your belly button is. Draw a line vertically through your body, and we're hugging everything in, even the elbows. Okay, hands press firmly, knees press. Okay, look down, scoot your knees back so you see your big toes.
Good, hear your breath. And when you're ready, breathe in, straighten your legs, reach up and let it out, out into the world. Good, roll your shoulders. Lovely, I have really a bad thing with my timing, <laughs> but maybe that's good for you. So hopefully it is. Um, we'll finish there. Have a lovely uh, rest of your day and I'll see you, what's today? Thursday, see you Saturday. Um, same time, 9.30. Brilliant, thank you.